In today's lecture, I differentiate prosimians from anthropoids. The order primates is divided into two suborders, the strepsirines, what we'll call prosimians, and the haplorines, we'll call them anthropoids. The characteristics of primates are typified by the anthropoids, the suborder to which we belong. The prosimians, on the other hand, have retained early primate characteristics, so they don't have all the characteristics we now associate with primates. That is, they have ancestral traits and look similar to the very earliest primates. When you look at a taxonomic chart, here separated out just the prosimians, or the strepsirines, Strepsirine is another Latin-based word referring to primates with moist no noses. So strepsi refers to uh, turning or twisted, and rind refers to nose. I think you've heard of other words with the, word, with the uh, Latin root rind in them, such as rhinoplasty. So among the prosimians, you can see that we have uh, two major groups, the lemurs, and the lorises. Their distribution is mostly in uh, Southeast Asia and into Africa. Prosimians are the most primitive primates. What do we mean by primitive? We mean that they developed the earliest and retain early traits. They don't possess all the characteristics that we have listed as characterizing primates. Many different uh, prosimians exist, including the lemur, indries, ii, loris, bush baby. So prosimians are usually dog-sized or smaller, which is not particularly a characteristic that sets them apart from other uh, from the anthropoids. They bear two to three young at birth. Prosimians are mostly nocturnal, that is, active at night. Therefore, they also have no color vision, unlike the anthropoids, which do have color vision. In order to see at night, they have a reflective layer behind their retina of the eye, which increases the amount of light for night vision. So they have reflective eyes. If you were to shine a light or a flashlight in their eyes at night, they would reflect back just as a cat's does. Whereas the haplorines, what we're calling the anthropoids, don't have this reflective layer, but instead have an area of enhanced vision, the fovea. Prosimians have a protruding snout, not something that you normally might associate with primates, and a naked, moist nose, like a dog's nose. Although prosimians have mostly nails and tactile pads, just like we do, they also have a grooming claw. If you recall, the characteristic primate, the anthropoids, do not have any grooming claw. They have all flat fingernails and associated tactile pads. And these tactile pads, incidentally, have fingerprints. Prosimians have a long tail. Now, some anthropoids also have long tails, but not all. Prosimians have prehensile hands and feet, that is, the ability to grasp, but their thumbs are not fully opposable. In other words, prosimians would not be as good at picking up Cheerios as we are. We know of seven families of prosimians. I think the thing that stands out the most that maybe is surprising or would make you not understand that these were primates is that they have these muzzles, these projecting faces and wet naked noses. However, you also note that their eyes are facing forward, which gives them binocular vision. 
Let's move on to talking about the haplorines, what I'm going to call anthropoids. And I invite you to use the word anthropoids rather than the Latin word haplorines. These are the primates that have the characteristics that I earlier listed as typical of primates. The suborder haplorines contains three groups, the tarsiers, the new world monkeys, and the old world monkeys, apes, and humans. I've listed them here in the order from least related to the most related to us. So tarsiers evolutionarily split off earlier. The new world monkeys split off in between. And then most recently, our group, the old world monkeys, apes, and humans um, formed a separate lineage. It's because of the tarsiers, a very strange group, that we no longer officially call this overall group anthropoids, but should instead call it haplorines. But for us in this class, you can go ahead and call them anthropoids. There are about 13 species of tarsier. It's debated whether there's just one genus or three genera. These small creatures are native to the Southeast Asian islands, including the Philippines. They're very small, six inches or less in size, not including the tail. They have a very primitive type of, of locomotion, like other prosimians, vertical clinging and leaping. And like prosimians, they are nocturnal, that is active at night. However, like anthropoids, their nose is dry and hair covered. And also its eyes do not have that reflective backing. So in that way, their eyes are like anthropoids. And although I didn't mention the placenta before for the prosimians, their placenta are also like anthropoids in that each month that the mother is not um, impregnated, she sheds her uterus, uh, the lining of her uterus. So they have a menstrual period. Prosimians do not. The second group are the New World monkeys. Platyrines, meaning flat-nosed. They have widely spaced nostrils. These New World monkeys, and New World refers to uh, Central and South America. They have 52 species. If you rec recall from talking about dental formula, they have four more teeth than we do. Almost all of them are arboreal or living in trees. And some of them have the unique characteristic of having prehensile tails. The third group are the catarines. These include the old world monkeys, that is Europe and Asia, apes, both lesser and greater, and humans. And the name catarine refers to sharp nose, which has closely spaced nostrils that point down. And since this is the parv order in which we are in, We'll look at this parv order in more detail. The catarines are divided into two superfamilies, the Cercopithecoidae or Cercopithecoids, the old world monkeys. These are the monkeys of Europe, Asia, and Africa. The Cercopithecoids have both terrestrial and arboreal species. Terrestrial refers to living on the ground, Arboreal refers to living in the trees. As you might imagine, the arboreal cercopithecoids tend to be smaller because uh, the larger you are, the more likely you are to break the tree branches. These also have less sexual dimorphism than do the terrestrial cercopithecoids or old world monkeys. Sexual dimorphism refers to differences between male versus female. And among primates, uh, when a species has sexual dimorphism, the males are larger than the females. And in fact, among some species, the males may be twice as big as the females. So terrestrial old world monkeys tend to be larger than the arboreal ones, and they tend to have more sexual dimorphism. The old world monkeys have two subfamilies consisting of about 12 genera and 78 species. 
The third group are the hominoids, or hominoidae. These include the lesser apes, such as the gibbons and siamangs, the great apes, which include the gorilla, chimpanzee, bonobo, and orangutan, and humans. In other words, hominoid refers to all apes and humans. Looking at a taxonomic chart of the hominoids, you can see that uh, they are uh, divided into uh, various groups as you go along. So one of these would be separating out the lesser apes from the great apes and humans. Once you've separated out those among the great apes, we separate out the orangutans and the gorillas from the chimpanzees, bonobos, and humans. To put all of this taxonomic hierarchy in, in uh, perspective, one way to look at it is to look at it uh, on a timeline. And so on this timeline, uh, the bottom of the chart is the oldest, 65 million years ago, and the top of the chart is today. And you can see that the prosimian lineage right here is the oldest. It evolved the first and modern day prosimians are the closest looking to what the very earliest primates looked like. The next to split off from that lineage were the tarsiers, which are kind of midway between prosimians and anthropoids, although now we classify them as a, a haplorine rather than a strepsorine. The next to split off were the New World monkeys. After that, the group that included the uh, old world monkeys, apes, and humans, that is the hominoids, uh, arose <coughs> about 25 million years ago. We see a split then between old world monkeys and apes and humans. Next to split, the lesser apes split off from the great apes. Next, at about, I think it was 13,000 years ago, or, or, or 13 million years ago, sorry, the orangutans split off from uh, the other great apes and humans. More recently, gorillas split off, and at about sometime between eight and six million years ago, humans and the chimpanzee bonobo lineages split off from each other. So in this chart, going from the bottom to the top, uh, where, play, where uh, species or groups split it becomes more recent in time. And as you go from right here with humans to left, the further left you go, the less closely related these other primates are to us. So to quickly sum up, prosimians developed the earliest back in time, soon after 65 million years ago. And even today, they don't have all the characteristics that we say are typical of primates. Don't worry about the category strepsorines or haplorines, but do know the term prosimian. So use the word prosimian instead of strepsorine. The non-prosimian primates include the tarsiers, which is a problem group, and what used to be called the anthropoids, monkeys, apes, and humans. Monkeys, which all have tails, are divided into new world monkeys and old world monkeys. The new world monkeys split off first from the old world monkeys and our lineage. The new world monkeys have flat noses, most live in trees, they have more teeth than us, and just a few of them have prehensile tails. Whereas old world monkeys have narrow noses like ours with nostrils pointing down. So among the monkeys, we shared a common far distant ancestor more recently with the old world monkeys than with the new world monkeys. The group hominoidae or hominoids includes the lesser apes, the great apes and humans. 
and these split off from the old world monkeys around 25 million years ago. Apes do not have tails. The hominoids are divided into two groups, the lesser apes and the great apes and humans. We call the great apes and humans hominids. A further division called hominins groups together just the humans, chimps, and bonobos. So in other words, chimpanzees are more closely related to us than they are to gorillas. You should be able to list at least four physical characteristics that differentiate prosimians from anthropoids. For example, most are nocturnal. They have a reflective eye. They have a protruding snout and a naked moist nose. Although they have fingernails and tactile pads, they also have a grooming claw. No color vision. Instead of bearing one, like anthropoids, they may bear two to three young at birth. They have a long tail. Of course, some anthropoids, the monkeys do too. And they have prehensile hands and feet, but not fully opposable thumbs. Prosimians do not have a prehensile tail. Who does? Hmm, just some of the New World monkeys. What are hominoids? They're all apes, both lesser and greater, and humans. What are hominids? Just the great apes and humans. So note that the larger word hominoid encompasses the larger group. What are hominins? Chimpanzees, bonobos, and humans. And by humans, I mean both extinct species of humans and genera of humans, but also current humans. In the le next lecture, I will talk about hominoids, the apes and humans.